In this video, we will learn how to apply the integration to find the area of region, sum, order, and range. In previous week, we have discussed the strategy and technique to solve the indefinite integral. We will continue with the definite integral in this week and solve the following engineering problem. You will see that application 1 to 5 here is where we apply the proper integral. You will also learn how to apply the improper integral, such as to find the escape velocity. Let's start with the first application. We have learned that if the function fx is given in this case, and a and b are provided, then we can form the integration to find the area under the curve. Similarly, for this case, if the function fx here is given, and then the a and b can be measured, then you can obtain the area under the curve by using the integration. So the most frequently used application for the integration is to find the area, like these two cases. Also, we should know that the integration has some analogy with the summation. For example, in this case, let's say you have a plate that has different temperature distribution. So you measure the dimension for the plate from here. This is your reference point. So at the first point here, so you measure it to be one unit. And you continue for the second point, two unit, third point, fourth point, fifth point. And the last point here, so in total you have six points. Then you measure the temperature at this point. For example, here let's say you obtain around 50 degree. You continue for the second point, let's say here around 90 degree, 80 for the third point, and so on. Right? So you obtain six temperature at six locations. So if you want to know the average temperature along this plate, then you can use the mean formula. So average temperature is equal to the mean here, which is the summation of all the y from point 1 to total number of point n. So in this case, you have 6 points. Okay, so you need to take the summation of all the temperature within these 6 points. So this is the summation, summation of all the temperature from point 1 to point 6. For example, you take the summation of the temperature one by one from 50 plus 90 plus 80 and so on until the last point. Then assume we obtain 350. And the end here is the total number of points that you measure, which is equal to 6. Divide the 350 with the 6, then you should obtain 58 degrees Celsius which is the mean or the average temperature here, 58. What if you continue to measure the temperature at this whole plate and you should obtain a continuous function like this. For infinity data from the lower limit A here to upper limit B. If this is the case, then we can find the total area here by using the integration function. Let's assume the lower limit and upper limit is A and B. And the Y function here to be Fx function with respect to the S axis here. So the integration here is analog to you take the summation of all the temperature within this region and add it up. So why we need to divide with b minus a? Before we explain why we need to divide it with the b minus a to obtain the mean, let's look at the integration term here. So this is your fx function from lower limit a to upper limit b. So after you perform the integration here, you should be able to obtain the area under the curve like this. So all of this area will be determined by this integration. From this graph, you can draw a line which indicates the mean temperature. The mean temperature line cannot be too high or too low. It must be balanced between the high temperature with the low temperature here. 
so it must be always here. You can imagine that there is some location with high temperature, some location with low temperature. So if you want to equally balance the temperature along these locations, then you can distribute it equally. So all of these locations has the same temperature, but the total summation is equal to the high temperature plus low temperature here. We notice that if we remove the temperature area above the mean line and fill the area under the curve, then it will form a rectangular area under the mean line where the height here is the mean and the width here is b minus a. So previous integration formula that you compute gives the area that can be represented by this rectangular area. So we can let it to be the mean multiplied with b minus a. Rearrange this formula, we can obtain the mean equal to the integration formula divided by the b minus a, where the mean is the average height of the temperature distribution curve here, and the b minus a is the range from a to b, which is also the width of the rectangular area here. So you can see this is a useful formula for us to find the mean. This method is actually numerical method because it deals with discrete data and we should know numerical method is not covered in this study and we will only focus on analytical method. Let's solve some problem that involve average or the mean. In this case, you have R function with respect to the T variable and this formula is given in sine function where you can draw R with respect to T and it is in sine function. So for the sine function at T equal to 0, sine 0 gives you 0, 0 multiplied 35, you obtain R equal to 0. So you should obtain this point here at T equal to 0, R should be equal to 0. So you can see that the amplitude is 35 and the omega is 2 pi divided by 10. So omega equal to 2 pi f, you can obtain the f equal to the omega divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 1 over 10. So the period is equal to 1 over f. So substitute f inside, you should obtain the period equal to 10 seconds, which means for one period, it takes 1 second. R is the rate of the water flow in the reservoir here, where you can see the water is flow inside the reservoir, and the rate of this is given by meter cube per hour. So we are going to find the total amount of water that flow inside the reservoir in the first 5 hours. So the total amount of water can be quantified by the volume which is in meter cube and if you know the rate which is in meter cube per hour then you just need to multiply the total number of hours times in hour then you can get back the volume in meter cube if the rate of the water flow is given in a constant let's say just 35 and the hour is constant also so we can directly get the answer by multiplication. However, in this case, it's in a sine function. So it's not straightforward as you can see that the rate is changed from time to time. So we cannot directly multiply the function with the constant here to get the volume. And we have to use integration to solve this. We're still multiplying the rate of the water flow with respect to time and multiply it with respect to time but here we put dt because this consider as a very small time interval we multiply it with the r and the limit for the time is from 0 to 5 hours 
in simple to find the total amount of water that has been thrown for 5 hours we can use the integration to substitute the rate of the water flow RT inside this formula and multiply it with respect to dt so you integrate from 0 hour to 5 hour so in this case the time here is in hour unit so the period of one cycle for the RT function should be equal to 1 hour instead of 1 second what you are actually doing in this formula is you take the RT means the rate at certain moment multiply it with the delta T where you can see the delta T is very very small by doing this you obtain the water amount at this particular moment then you apply the integration from 0 to 5 hour which means you take the summation of all the water amount from 0 hour to 5 hour so you integrate the sign give you negative cos and then you need to divide with the coefficient here which is equal to multiply with this coefficient then you need to substitute the upper limit inside and minus with the one with lower limit then you should be able to obtain this answer so this is the water amount for the water flow inside the reservoir for 5 hours so the volume here is equal to this answer what is the average rate of the water flow so this one is for 5 hours so the average rate you just need to divide this by 5 hours this formula is the same when you apply the integration of the RT function with respect to time divided with the B minus A so in this case A is equal to 0 and B equal to 5 so B minus A should give you 5 by compute this you obtain 22.28 meter cube per hour 